All right, guys, welcome back to Not Just Football. You know me, Cam. You know him, Hayden. But we got a great episode planned for you for you guys. We're going to talk Planes. We're going to talk Raiders game. And we might even get to talk Le'Veon Bell. So we'll talk about that later. But, Hayden, I got to tell you about this plane ride. It was pretty what, special. What happened? I mean, I, I flew the red eye home. I get out, turn on my phone, and you guys are stuck in Kansas City. Please tell us what happened. Okay, so we got on the plane around 11 o'clock, uh, and that's Pacific time. And we are waiting for almost two hours to even take off. Uh, and, you know, a little bit unusual. We look outside. You see they're loading. It's just taking a while. The pilot says... Um, he's just waiting for, um, to get clearance to go up in the air, finally get up in the air. And we're like, oh yeah, we'll be home soon. You know, it might be a little bit longer. Might get home at 7am instead of 6am. Um, and then, you know, guys are asleep, uh, peacefully, you know, just played a long game and we get, you start hearing, uh, the pilot get up and say, it's a code yellow. I don't know what a code yellow is. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm starting to watch guys wake up and, you know, all the stewardess and flight attendants are just saying, uh, you need to buckle up. You need to wake up right now. Uh, and I don't know what that means. You don't know if it's turbulence. You don't know what it was. Guys are checking what a, uh, um, a code yellow even means on a plane. For me, uh, after I realized code yellow was a mechanical issue, um, <laughs> I thought to myself, Let's Google what's the safest way to uh, deal with um, safest way to deal with um, brutal, brutal, like blunt force from a crash. <laughs> and so impact, I, yeah, impact, Same. dealing yeah. with impact. And so I'm, I'm nervous. I don't know what to think. Um, we land safely in Kansas City. Um, we find out that we need oil on um, the oil pressure was low and if the oil pressure is low the engine would have went out and on one of the uh, the inside the plane and um so they tell us we're going to be in uh kansas city um you know, at this point i'm pretty loopy i'm just uh, i'm live tweeting at this point I'm, oh, yeah you were, you were <laughs> I'm, I, tweeting. yeah you were yeah and so they tell us it's going to be some hours, five or six hours before we can get a plane to get all the people we have on. Cause you know, we have upwards of, you know, 90 to a hundred people. Uh, and so, yeah, just waiting there ask, you know, they, the flight attendants were great. They brought out donuts. Um, there was breakfast pizza at one point. Um, we got pancakes. I don't even, they said they had a chef on. We don't know who the chef was, <laughs> but the pancakes were great. Um, and then we eventually got onto a different plane and it was a little bit crazy, but uh, man, I enjoyed that trip. We got to really bond on that trip. Uh, so time out. How long were you stuck on the plane in Kansas city? Did you get to leave? Did you end up making it to Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey? I saw you tweet. No, at them. no, I, I, t I tweeted at them, but they did not respond. Um, kind of bummed about it. Uh, tweeted at Snoop. Snoop didn't come through. Soul plane didn't uh, come through, huh? Soul plane did not come through. Kevin Hart was using soul plane at the time, but, oh, okay. uh, we are, we were just stranded in there. We didn't come off the plane until we were ready to go on another plane. So we were on there for like six hours. And, you know, I don't really have to worry about that. I was in like a first class seat. But not everybody was given that privilege to sit in the first class seat. So I felt bad. Um, and I didn't want to make a big deal about it. But uh, luckily, we got off the plane and everybody was very thankful. Um, but the amount of jokes that were told by guys and we just kept talking, um, there were guys there were some people on the plane, not players, but there's some people on the plane that took some shower pills. Um, what is a shower pill? Sorry. It, it informed the they, uninformed. They take a pill instead of taking a shower. And so, you know, it, it was pretty smelly on the plane as well. So it was what? One, of the, one of the wildest experiences we've had uh, being a Pittsburgh Steeler. Name names. Who takes no, a I'm pill? Not name name name. I'm, is, I'm not naming names. I'm not naming names. That is insanity. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That should not like wow. All right. That's our our talk about planes, but we have a special guest, the one and only Juice Le'Veon Bell. So take a listen. Tickets to the game, merch, meals at iconic restaurants, stays at Caesar's Palace. All this can be yours when you bet with Caesar Sportsbook. 
Win or lose, every bet earns reward credits, which you can redeem across the empire. Now, if you haven't started yet, register using code Omaha Full and then place your first bet up to $1,250. If you win, great. You keep those winnings. But if you lose, you'll get your stake back as a bonus bet. All right, guys. We did say we had a special guest, and I thought it was Le'Veon Bell, but Christian Coons jumped on. I appreciate you coming on. <laughs> Hold on. Let's clap, let's clap it up. Everybody clap, clap it up. up. Clap Thanks, it up. Clap it up. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'm out here in Monroe, out of Verizon. They're all looking – they're all lined up on the curb looking at me. I'm, I'm just wondering, are you selling insurance? Why do you have on the polo today? See, that's messed up. I was at an event in Heinz Field. I wasn't selling anything – or Acresure, I'm sorry. Um, that's I wasn't selling insurance, Cam. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's move on. Okay. Um, so we just had the Raiders, Raiders game. And before we get into the game, how, how are you feeling from the plane ride? Um, I feel good. I'm a little, little tired. I mean, the plane ride was pretty scary. It must be nice being in first class, having your own bed up there. Um, us guys that are, you know, not fortunate enough to be in first class were, were sitting with the luggage, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't ideal. <laughs> They have parachute. They give those guys in first class parachutes and 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 stuff. If we go down, they tell us to hold on to our seat. <laughs> Christian, how annoying was Cam on the flight? He openly admitted he got loopy and was a tad annoying. How annoying was he? Yeah, he he complains about everything. He <laughs> runs up and down, complains. He needs his drinks. He needs his food. While well, the back of us are getting the scraps. <laughs> wait, wait, hold yeah. up, hold up. You were complaining. Okay, so like when they said baby. it was a when they said it was a code yellow, what did you think? I had no idea. Everyone was sleeping. I was up, and I actually thought we were going down. How the flight attendants were like moving up and down the aisle. They were flying, picking up trash, waking people up. Like they put all the lights on. James Pierre was, you know, James Pierre was freaking out. <laughs> Calvin Austin scared as hell. Calvin was Calvin was rolled up in a ball, saying, "Please, Lord, not like this." <laughs> He just got his first touchdown too, man. Can you imagine how unlucky that is? Too? Just first, got first touchdown, touchdown. Yeah. not going down with the plane. Yeah, he. It, it wasn't. It was. It was pretty scary. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Yeah, crazy situation. Um, yeah, but uh, did you think we were gonna be stuck in Casey any longer after that? No, I, I. I thought we were gonna stay overnight. Honestly, I didn't. I didn't expect to sit there for, you know, a couple hours, but it worked out. We got home safe, so there's no complaints here. Okay, and this is a great segue to get to the Raiders game, but did you take a shower after the game? Why? Well, I always shower. I, I'm, a, I'm an advocate of showering after games. I mean, if, you don't, if you're not showering after games, it's, there's something wrong with you. But there's you're, some, players, you're one on guy the, that there's some players on the team that don't shower and coaches. And I just wanted no, your opinion. Just, it's the shower disgusting. pill. Please explain I, what the shower pill is. You got a shower, dude. Uh, <laughs> there's no explanation besides you got a shower. What kind of what kind of explanation do we need? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into the Raiders game real quick. Um, first, I want to give big props to Presley Harvin. I thought he had an amazing game. Um, is that more of the snap or more of the kick? More of the kick. <laughs> All of the kick. I mean, he 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 played his ass off. Um, he punted like we all see him punt in practice. So we needed that. That was huge, and hopefully we could build on that going forward. See, you're being very nice because during the locker room, you know, everybody was <laughs> saying, "Good job, press." And what did you say? I t I told you that you're welcome for my service because no one <laughs> you weren't saying thank you to me. So I looked at you. I said, you're welcome, Cam. And you looked at me and told me to shut up. Yeah, I do. Well, well, Christian, do you get randomly drug tested when Presley has a big game? Uh, yeah, they know. They know where it's coming from, basically. <laughs> that piece of paper is always in my locker. All right. Um, what did you think about the make a hit? Um. What do you want them to do there? I don't. I, I mean, I I haven't been in that situation now in probably you know three or four years since I got my sack in Carolina. Remember that? Um, so I, I don't really know what you want Minka to do there. 
if he goes low, he's going to get called for a low hit. If he stays high, he got called for unnecessary roughness on a quarterback. I, I think it's kind of it was kind of BS, and it's just how it's how the game is nowadays. It kind of sucks. What would you have done in that situation? I would have sacked him cleanly, probably. <laughs> <laughs> he got the ball, Cam. He'd have got the ball. Is there anything else you want to bring up before we let you go? Uh, you forgot to talk about Boz is just slyly kicking the 57, no issue. Like, even without you on the field goal team, no problem. Yeah, there were some problems out there, but Boz knocked it down. I'll say that. I mean, that was a smooth 57. That guy, that guy and, is a killer. And press, press got the snap because the snap was a little bit off. So, <laughs> there was a no, little there, – there no, no, You know, I, I got to commend Press and Boz for really just – locking it down when the snapper was out of control see you're acting like coach t now no it wasn't out of control he's gonna show it tomorrow it wasn't out of control wait wait what does coach t do he just says oh he goes hold and kick snap adequate Well, so. I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate you, Coons, jump, jumping on real quick and crashing. Um, but we got a special guest that we got to get to. So thank you. Oh, that's I'm messed kidding. up. You told me I, I, was, you told me I was a special I guest. You, you told me I was a special guest, Hayden. That's, you are a special Hayden, guest. I want your, yeah, whatever, dude. We we bumped Whatever. Le'Veon for you, so just remember that. All right, You always remember that. We bumped him yeah. for you. So that will always be how it went. Is there anything you want to okay. ask Le'Veon? Do you need a jersey or anything? Um, no, no, I don't. No, I don't have any. No, nah, I was. We're good. We're good. I I know what Le'Veon brought to the table. The patient running. He's one of the best. You know, I don't, no questions asked. I don't need any questions. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you, Christian Coos, for jumping on, brother. Yeah, thanks, Christian. Really appreciate <laughs> thank it. You guys. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Hayden, yeah. Cam. Hopefully, I don't see you tomorrow. I got your back, dude. I got you. Don't worry. I got you. All right, guys. Welcome back to Not Just Football. We have a very special guest, three-time Pro Bowler. You know him as Juice L. Bell, Mister Le'Veon Bell. Appreciate you coming on, brother. Nah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Real talk. Appreciate you. Yeah, and, and you went to Michigan State. I don't like mentioning that a lot, but I'll mention it now. <laughs> you need to love mentioning that, especially right now, bro. Y'all, right now it's kind of looking good for y'all versus, bro. I ain't gonna lie, it ain't looking too good for Michigan State, but it's kind of sad. Okay, uh, let's get this out. You know, you're an Ohio guy, and you went to Michigan <laughs> State. How the heck did that happen? So, damn. Ohio guy, I was born and raised in the backyard of Ohio State. Born and raised Columbus, Ohio. I went to Groveport Madison High School. Um, I was a two-star recruit. I wasn't really the highest recruit. Um, and so I, I only had, uh, coming out, I only had four total offers. I had four total offers. I had Bowling Green. I had Marshall. I had Eastern Michigan. Then I got the Michigan State offer. Um, the Michigan State offer came... Like, literally, so my junior year, like, coming into my junior year in high school, I received three offers, those three max schools, Mm -hmm. and then I played the whole junior year, Mm -hmm. and then I got that Michigan State offer um, going into my senior year, and then I kind of was, like, sitting on that the whole time, and I didn't get any more offers after that Michigan State. Um, They had, like, uh, like some guys who blew some scholarships. It was, like, like a, a, a frat football team fight. It's like a like something happened on campus, right? So they was in like a like they needed players. They needed players like ASAP, you know what I'm saying? So um they ended up coming to one of my basketball games and then watching me hoop, yeah Kim, watching me hoop, went out there, dropped 40. What? Uh Coach Dan. Coach Dan Enos was he's the uh, running back coach at Michigan State at the time. Dan Enos. Um he recruited me, he came to my game, he watched me hoop and Literally that next day, um, they offered me a scholarship, and um, yeah, and then I took those. Uh, that was the only big school I had. Like that was the uh, like the only like I, I guess like power school I had, and I always kind of believed in my talent. So um, that was no a no brainer for me to go to Michigan State over those other schools. And you were actually in Vegas this past week for the Raiders game. Man, tell me yes. what you thought about the game. 
All right, so I watched the first like three quarters, and then the last quarter I had to go do something. But the first three, I think. Uh, <laughs> all right, I think we got talent. I think we got talent. A lot of young talent. Um, offensively speaking, we look a little. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like we we're not as explosive, obviously, like we were six, seven years ago. But the talent is there. Like uh, Pickens. Um, Pickens on the outside, 14. Special player, 19 is super fast. <laughs> um, bro, he's bro, he unbelievably fast. I was just like watching. I'm like, bro, what the hell? Um, then um, obviously 22 and 30. Both of the backs. I like both of the mm-hmm. backs. For me, I think um, running the ball, it's always kind of like in the beginning of the year, it's always kind of hard to kind of establish the run, establish the run. I think as the time going, because I know how close he is. They gonna work. They gonna, they gonna work. You gonna work that run. They gonna work that run game. Work that run game. So I'm thinking like, in a couple of weeks, I think it'll be way a, a way better uh, outcome for the running running just the running game. Just like okay, line up and run. Why, why is it tough like that? Like that? Why is it tough at the beginning of the year to establish a run like that? Um, I think the more reps the guys get together, um, it get it, it becomes more. Like more like fundamental. It's it's more like guys ain't got to think mm-hmm. as much, because the more you do it, it just kind of comes second nature. When at the beginning of the year, I ain't gonna lie, you kind of see a lot of looks. You going against your own team the whole camp. So then, all right, now you're seeing different looks, and you're so used to seeing a certain looking camp the whole time. Mm-hmm. So it's like now you got to get used to seeing different looks every week. Even though we got our base run plays, but we still got to run those base run plays on different defenses. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes those defenses present different different problems. So our base run play, we might have to tweak it a little bit. Like we might have to have a little tweak or a little minor change or something. And I think, you know, over the course of the weeks go, people will get better at picking up like, okay, we seen 4-3 this week or the way they run this 4-3. So we know how to set it up this time or we know how to block it. You know what I'm saying? We know how to double team the, you know, the nine technique up to the back or you no know, reach to the nine or whatever the play might be. Um, the more you see it, obviously the more comfortable guys get. And it's just kind of harder at the beginning of the year just because you're so used to seeing your own mm. team. So I, that's why I always feel like, especially when I was playing, like our run game would kind of start heating up real crazy. I mean, we have our games early in the year, but it started heating up real crazy, like around like week six, Seven, where it's like, okay, we can line up, we can run the same play three, four, five, six times in a row, and people couldn't stop it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, yeah, we was on that page like that. So um, that's where I feel like got the, they got the talent to get there. Obviously, it's gonna take hella practice, hella reps. You know what I'm saying? I like the old line I was with in Pittsburgh was obsessed. Like we, you know what I'm saying? We uh, on Thursday nights we would go to Pounty's trip and then watch the film of practice like together, like without the coaches and everything. You know what I'm saying? So like, I don't know exactly what the process this guys going into it now, but we were like obsessed with the run game. Like, okay, it don't even matter if they showing this guy if this guy blitzing the A gap or the B gap. We're gonna pick it, pick it up. Like, it don't even matter what they show us. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So um, I think as time goes on, guys start seeing like more things because it's a young group too. So guys start seeing more and then better react way better or be able to adjust way better just because they've seen it before. Yeah. I wanted you to, uh, you know, almost talk about Najee and Jalen, um, Jalen Warren. You know, you look at those guys, you look at you and D'Angelo, you guys were, you know, a great duo. And it's mm-hmm. hard to gel like that. But when you look at them, <laughs> what is their outlook and how do they compare compare going forward? Uh, I like the one-two punch. I like it. I think uh, I had said it earlier, and it's not talking bad about Najee because everybody thinks I was talking bad about it when I said it. But I, I feel like because what I did from year one to year two, I came in. Cam, Cam, no, mm-hmm. you see me come in. I was around two thirty-five for my rookie year, close to pushing two forty because I was coming out of Michigan State. I was a big yeah. back, right? And then my year two, like I was training, whatever, and I like lost weight because because when I lost the weight. I felt more nimble. So my running style, the way I wanted to run and be sideways and stuff, I could do it on the college level. But when you get to the NFL level, guys like Cam is like big, but they fast too. Like, like these dudes fast. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like <laughs> it's not like you can like you like you can have no like hesitation or no like I mean you can have hesitation, but nothing like 
that's going to stick. Like nothing that's like, okay, if I'm trying to get to a spot, I can't have no hesitations in when I'm trying to get there. You know, it's like when you're trying to get there, you got to get there, right? I feel like my rookie year, I was feeling that. Like, okay, I feel like I was a little too heavy to get to the other spots that I wanted to get to. But I could see them. I could see the spots, and I wanted to get there, but I just couldn't get there. So I, I remember training. I went to Pete's all summer. I'm like, I wanted to lose weight. I want to get a little more explosive because sometimes it's just an extra step. That's all you need. That takes a run from two yards to about nine. You know what I'm saying? Just like better to squeeze through the hole. So – I trained that hard um, in that off season. I came back year two. I came back into camp. I was probably like 215. Um, I was like ripped up. I was like three and a half percent body fat. And then my second year is kind of the year I had a big year. I had a big year. What I'm saying about Najee, I think he has a, he's a special runner. I, th- I think he can see the holes. I even think he knows how to set up his runs. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm a guy who can like really watch running backs. And some guys need a hole. Like some guys really need it. Some guys not are like, they're not a finesse and run and like not to set it up and make something out of nothing. And he's so good at that. And I think he can be even better if he was a little lighter. So you bring up that that setting up. And I wanted to talk about this because I know you're really good at being patient in the hole. How did you get good at that? Like, what were you looking at to really, you know, set up a block or make sure that this guy is going to get in this place? So then I can come back to that that hole. All right, so for me, like when people talk about the patience, it was just me trying to like, I guess, manipulate defenders, right? So we had a play that we ran all the time in Pittsburgh called double or duo. Or what people do so it's basically like they ran they ran it to death still mm-hmm. um, two days ago. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? Still running. Um, it's basically like a play where like the linebacker is like a middle linebacker. It's two like both linebackers, right? Any linebackers. They're not really blocked yet. It's really start from the bottom. So you got the double teams from the O line, and they double team the D line, and all the way to the backers. That's what you're trying to do. That's the whole setup of the play. What I used to do was I would manipulate. So if I knew I can I, before the play even start, I can I can I can tell like okay that middle linebacker he he owns the A gap. That's his gap. I can tell that's his gap because I can tell why this guy is in this gap and this guy's doing this. All right, and they might do this some some. So I can tell like okay. He's in his A gap. If I, how can I get him out of his A gap? Because if I get him out of his A gap, the A gap gonna be wide open, and I'm gonna, you know, what I'm saying, ain't nobody gonna be covering. So I'm gonna get in there and, and get get yards, whatever. So a lot of times I would get the ball, and I would know he had the A gap, and I would just like turn my head outside. I'll, I'll just turn my head outside or turn my head the other way, just so that linebacker that's unblocked, he's reading me, so he's gonna try to make the tackle. So if I'm looking to the right. And they know the double teams are coming. A lot of times, those guys will try to beat the double team. Like, they'll try to, like, run over and beat the double team. And I play by that. I already knew guys were going to try to do that. So, I'll just look outside. And they'll wait. They'll wait. They'll be in there. They're doing their job, doing their job, doing their job. And I'll wait. And I'll let them do their job until they're like, okay, no, I got to go make the play. So, then they leave their gap to try to run outside. And then so the moment they do that, the moment they like put their foot in there and they start changing direction, I put my foot in the ground and I go into the A gap. You know what I'm saying? Or wherever gap it was, I was trying to go. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's literally what I did. It like and on different plays, it varied for different things. You know what I'm saying? So on double, I would like read the mic or certain things. On stretch, I would probably read the DN or um, on counter, it'd be certain things I'm reading. I'm reading the guard, so it's like, dang, I might hang outside of the guard a little bit just so this guy, because he's not gonna let me go outside of him. His job is to contain. So. If he has to contain me and I know a guy is coming to pull and kick him out, if I run a little wider, he's going to have to get wider because he's going to have to think I got to go outside. He's going to have to get outside. He's going to have to. So I'm widening up the hole, and then it makes this guy that's coming inside his job a little easier just because this guy didn't want me to go outside. So if I'm looking like I'm going outside, he's going to just keep widening, widening. Then this guy can come kick him out, and then now I can get inside. You know what I'm saying? So it really depends on the play. But I think – for one, it just came off of obviously practice, watching hella film, and not – it's like I take coaching, but also at certain times I had to ignore certain things too because a lot of people would be like, growing up my whole life, they'd be like, Le'Veon hit the hole. Le'Veon hit the hole. Le'Veon. <laughs> and that's what – Cam, I promise you, that's all I heard my whole life, bro, my whole life. Even like – because when people first see it, it looks so different. So they like – like it looked like people might look like I'm running scared. People like somebody literally came to me before and said, "Like you look like you're running scared." And then it's like, 
damn, I can see why you say that, but I'm definitely not scared. It just more so I'm just I'm waiting and trying to manipulate. As like I'm not trying to use as much like strength and speed. Like I like you know what I'm saying. I don't have to really do that if I can really okay. I know this guy got the C gap. If I can get him out of the C gap and help my lineman block him, and they can just open up the hole for me, I'm gonna hit the C gap easy. And then the athletic ability takes over when you're in the open field, and now a guy got to tackle you so you can, you know, what I'm saying show off everything. But and don't get me wrong, but going against Jar every day, because these guys knew me like they knew what I like to do. So when I went against our team, our defense every day, it only helped me because it's like okay, if I had to like set up a block and these guys just sticking they're just sticking to their gap like nope we're not getting out of our gap we know the way they down run we're not getting out of this gap at all that would help me for when teams like the Patriots the Patriots like literally they would like literally get into their gap and they wouldn't even look at it. like <laughs> literally the Patriots I remember we were playing the Patriots and we are running the gap and they literally like they I, they had to be, get coached to not even make eye contact with me just to stay in the gap because guys will literally turn and just sit in the gap and won't even be looking at me until I run into the gap and then somebody just grab me. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like all that, I guess, all the patience that I had just came with practice, a lot of lot of watching film and then kind of ignoring, you know, the outside people telling me to hit the hole all the time. Um, and obviously I still take coaching for what it is but because I couldn't be a, a great player without having coaching but I didn't allow them to get me out of the style that made me for all I was. You know what I'm saying? Where do you stand on the current situation of running backs in the NFL, Le'Veon? What do you mean? Like the current market. They're not getting paid. You know, I mean, yeah. where do you stand on that? You were, you were a trailblazer in that. I know, bro. I, bro, I wish it was something I could do. Obviously, it's not. <laughs> I didn't try. <laughs> but, I, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like the running back market, it, it is what it is because the fact that the way people view it. So people view it as like, uh, we can just plug another running back in. And don't get me wrong, you can. Like, you can, but there's every in every position, every, there's always special guys. Like, at quarterback, at receiver, D-line, D-end. Like, it's always guys who like, all right, these guys are, you know, really good players. These guys are special players. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and those special players, you got about five or six of them every yeah. year. You know what I'm saying? And same with the running backs. There's always like five, six special guys. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not even as much, but you'll have your couple, and then I find this to be compensated. I, I think that it should be like kind of like how basketball is. Like Capital. if you like first team all pro or mm-hmm. something, then okay, you're up for what type of payment, like or what type of you know caliber player. Like first team all pro, because that's what basketball do. It's like you get the first team all pro, whatever. And then it's like you get a super max contract or however they do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and they don't be like, okay, uh, you play point guard. We can't pay you this. Oh, you play center. Oh, yeah, we can pay you this. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like you play point guard, you play small four, you play center. They all play basketball. So it's like, okay, it don't matter. They go by like first team. Like, okay, you first yeah. team. Okay, we want super match. Like, and I think that's something the NFL should kind of emulate because I just think it'd be more fair because don't get me, bro, running backs do a lot, bro. Like, running backs do a lot. And you've changed and, the game in that up front. You know, it's not just running the ball. It's blocking. It's receiving. You know, it's, there's so right. many things to it than just running the ball in particular. Because a, a lot of times people think about the carries on the wear and tear just from us getting the ball. But then I even think about the blocking, mm-hmm. bro. The blocking is really the time when it's, like, really knocking because these guys are coming in A-gap, timing up the blitz, like, yeah. and we got to go meet those guys, you know what I'm saying, on our yeah. heels. So – it, it's like those are those are the times where people were not really understanding. Like, oh, that's why I didn't get paid. Y'all basically, I'm basically an old lineman out here. You know what I'm saying? And we got to protect the quarterback. We can't get the quarterback hit for sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That can't happen. That's like that's not even a thought. So, um, and at the same time, you got guys who you know, so you got certain guys who come in and block. You got certain guys who come in and receive. You got certain guys who just in between the tackles, and you got certain guys who can do it all. And I think those guys, especially guys, do it all. They should be like compensated for that. You know, what I'm saying that's those guys be the first team all pros and and things like that. So I don't know the mark, running back market. I obviously, you know, y'all know I don't like it. Y'all know I don't like it. I feel like these guys need to be paid. <laughs> y'all, know, I think these guys need to be paid way more than they would getting paid. But um, I don't know. I don't know what's going to change. I don't know how it's going to change. Um, but something got to change. Uh, hopefully, something happens. It's got to change. You know what I'm saying sooner. But we got to jump yeah. into the old Steelers vault. And we got to talk about okay. the old Killer Bees, man. What was it like oh, being part of that group? You know, you, Ben, and AB. 
Bro, special, bro. That was a special, special moment. AB, special player. That was like really, so growing up, I never really played with a guy that they was on my team. Actually, I mean, for sure on my team, but like, I, I feel like I never played with a guy where I, where I seen him playing, and I'm like, damn. Like, this person, like, might actually be just as good as football as me. Or they might, <laughs> he, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, for real. Like, that's, like, literally the only thought. I'm like, I, I'm like, literally watching. I'm like, damn, he might actually be as good as me. Like, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? Before, it's like, I'm always feeling like I'm always the best player. Like, I always feel like that. But when I play with AB, and I'm like, damn, like, hold up. Like, he, like, you know what I'm saying? He's nice. Because um, he's, like, one of those guys. I, 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 his work ethic, people didn't really see, like, how hard AB worked. Like, and I can tell he probably had he, he had that chip on that shoulder because the way he worked, and there's there's no way you can work that hard and I had that chip on your shoulder. I already know he's an overlooked guy, probably. Mm-hmm. He went to Central Michigan, so he already went to a Max suit, so he already didn't have a whole bunch of offers where but now if you look back on it, people probably think like, damn, how the fuck we miss this? You know what I'm saying? But it's certain times, maybe he wouldn't even been that special if he had all that attention at the time. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of times people go through things and that's what make them special. So he had to go to Central Michigan. He bought at Central Michigan. Came in his rookie year. I, I think it was his rookie year when it's like the first time he got it. Is, I, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, Cam, but the first time he got on a kickoff return, he yes. scored. Like the first yes. time he got it. So it's like people got to see it. It's like, whoa. Like literally the first touch in the NFL, I'm scoring. So special player, you know what I'm saying? And then Ben, bruh, Ben was like, <laughs> So I've definitely never played with a player like Ben playing quarterback because he's like – Ben was a hooper. Ben was a hooper. And this is like – man, I, I wish like social media was really popping. Like I mean, it was coming up. It was like on Instagram was on the way up. But my, my rookie year, though, when I was watching Ben play, Ben was doing spectacular things. Like I don't even remember his stats or nothing. But I just remember like me looking back blocking for him. He's – everybody was talking about the no-look home, the no look Patrick Mahomes mm-hmm. thing. Like – but Ben been doing that. Like Ben was doing that already. Like So looking back on that time, are you regretful it had to end with the Steelers? Do I, yeah, for because I feel like for me, it was just bigger than at the time, it, it felt bigger than like football at the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? At the time I felt like I wasn't really being respected for what I was doing and what I was bringing to the game. And it's like now, years later, when I'm looking back on this, like, all right, for a couple million, like, could I just went there and still had that special group? Yeah, for sure. But I wouldn't necessarily say I regret it just because I've learned so much. And like, like, even like high school, when I was overlooked and things like that, and it gave me a chip on my shoulder, it gave me like a sense of motivation. Those mistakes or whatever people may look at as mistakes, those are like learning things for me. Like, that's like learning curve. So like, I needed that to help for me to the person I am today. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I didn't have, you know, all those learning, you know, opposition or uh, op- opportunities, I wouldn't, I, I, I couldn't literally sit and look at myself and be like, man, like, I'm proud of myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's so much, it's so much like that people, you know what I'm saying, hold to their self and like they hold yourself accountable, which as you should, but it's like they hold yourself down. It's like, and then it's like, once you hold yourself down, it's like you really hold yourself back because you, you're not, I don't know, maybe you may lose some belief or some confidence or whatever it may be. I, I'm a guy who, I, it's crazy. I was talking to Marshawn Lynch yesterday. On a, I, I had a fight like here and I was talking to Marshawn Lynch. It's crazy. I ran to him on a plane and he was like, bro, he can't say, he's like, bro, I'm so proud of you, bro. Like, man, like I love your way you, your NFL career went, man. I love what you're doing now with the music. I love what you're doing now with the boxing. Bro, you doing everything, bro. And I'm like, I'm like thinking about it in my head. I'm like, damn, this is Marshawn Lynch telling me this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like Marshawn Lynch, I guess he been tapped in. Like he he been watching. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I'm like, I'm telling him, like, bro, you had a great NFL career, bro. I see you on NFL network all the time where you always on the commercials and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like we just catching up. But it's like we both still going. You know what I'm saying? We're not playing football, but we both still going. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about your rap career. You just recently did a collab with AB. How you feeling about that? How'd that yeah. come about? Man, me and my guy AB. But so AB, he been doing the music. I, I've been doing the music, obviously, since I got into the league. AB picked it up um, like 
a couple years ago, he been going crazy with it. He low key, uh, like people were like he, he been giving uh, songs with like a lot of big artists and things like that. So um, he actually hit me up. He's like LB, I'm in LA, bro. Let's get in the studio. I'm like, bro, let's get in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Me and him link up, we get in the studio, and obviously we link up. It's just like old times, like how we are in the studio. Uh, you know what I'm saying? With the Steelers locker room, just like old days. You know what I'm saying? We just dapping up. We ain't miss each other. We miss each other. We ain't see each other in a long time. We make the song, and before we even make the song, I already had sent him a song for him to help on. So we already had like, so this is our second song mm-hmm. that we really made when we met in person, and um, then like we linked up in person, and like that whole week we spent spent with each other. We was like, all right, but where we going, bro? All right, we gonna go to Detroit. All right, we gonna Detroit. We go to Lansing. All right, we go to Lansing. We go to Atlanta. All right, we go to Atlanta. All right, we going back to Fort Lauderdale. We just because we got to the point where it's like, all right, damn, bro, we a bitch like bitch the locker room type. You know what I'm saying? It's like you with your teammates, so it's like. But we with each other, we going everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we've been performing, um, having like a couple performances and things like that. Um, we haven't released the song that we made, but we obviously have talks about it. We trying to come up with a little game plan about how to release it and when to release it and how to go about everything. So, but yeah, me and him got music together. Um, and you know what I'm saying? Me and him like this, bro, still. It's like how we were back in, you know what I'm saying? In the locker room, that's my guy, bro. That's like literally my guy. That's my brother, bro. They like that's what I'm saying. When I got time to be with Cam, when Cam done, bro, I don't know what that's gonna be. Probably about four, five more years. Cam was <laughs> Iron Man. But when he done, I'm with Cam, bro. Like Cam, bo, hey, we were in that studio. Let's go. Let's um, go. No shot. No shot. Let's go. No. Yeah. I just need to drop like the chorus. Stop. I just need to drop the chorus. Oh, no. Yes. Give me the chorus. Yeah. Get Cam with that beat. Let's go. Everybody no. got a rap. He can at least say something. If he if, if he want to be talking, I can put feature and camera. And he needs a ghostwriter, Le'Veon. Oh, he needs you to ghostwrite for him. Then, I, right? I, I am a ghost hell of a hype man. Yeah, I can do all the little Migos stuff. Woo, woo, woo. Okay. The Atlas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I can do all the Migos stuff. That's all I can do. This little hype man. Okay, let, let's get in the boxing now. What, what sparked your interest into getting into boxing? So, just extra cardio, extra cardio workout. So, I started boxing in Pittsburgh when I was like twenty. I think twenty fifteen is when I started. Twenty sixteen is when I started. I picked it up for like extra cardio. So, I go to OTAs. We go to OTAs or whatever it was. Have all our practice, and I would go box after. I would go to like to the to, uh, the title boxing gym. And I'll get a couple rounds in, like extra cardio, blase, blase. So, and I would do that every year. So, like 2017, 2018, 2019. So, over a course of time of me doing it, I'm like getting better at it. I'm starting to, you know, like it a little more. Then in 2020, I had the year where I'm like sitting out, uh, or 2021, or, I can, or coming into 2021, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm not signing with a team and I come in and sign with the Ravens, but we're not going to talk about that. But we're talk before, about I, before that, I'm like, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> he said, no, we're going to yeah, talk about you're that. You're not getting off the hook for that. <laughs> that hurt me. We ain't going to talk about that. So before that, right, I'm like training. It's like, all right, I'm, I'm feeling. So now it's like we're talking about everybody like, no, I've been training for the boxing thing, whatever. So now, and AP been kind of training for the boxing thing. So like everybody in the great bond, it's like set up a fight between me and AP. So, I already kind of been sparring a little bit just because just because I, I just enjoyed like the workout. You know what I'm saying? It, it low-key gave me like an extra rush because I wasn't playing football. So it's like something like it kind of gave me like a little that that little edge, like give my little edge off my competitive edge I always have when I'm playing football. So it started with the sparring and then like people like kind of started talking to except the AP fight. So then when the AP fight happens, I'm leading up, I'm working hard going up that fight because I don't even know what to expect. I, I have no idea what to expect in this ring because I ain't never bought I never been in a fight. You know what I'm saying? I'll spark, but I ain't never been in a fight. Like on the stage. So I'm just like, all right. So I'm making sure when I'm training, I'm in shape. Um make sure I ain't getting tired. I'm making sure like I'm prepared. You know what I'm saying? I'm training hard, right? I come in for the fight. <laughs> uh, me and AP, we we fight whatever. I end up knocking AP out, which is crazy because I didn't even mean to knock him out, which is the <laughs> the, the unbelievable part. Cause I didn't throw my punch hard, but he just ran into it. So it was like, okay, you just run into a punch. It was like a crackback. You know what I'm saying? It was like one of those. He ran right into it, bro. And just, he like literally melted. it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then I think once that happened, like once I hit him and I, I kind of turned around, 
And then I see him like just like kind of fall down. He trying to get up, and I know how that mindset is. He trying to get up, trying to show like he not hurt. Like I know he is, but he like he like wobbly. I'm thinking like, damn, did I just knock out Adrian Peterson? You know what I'm saying? Like I like literally that thought in my head, like I just knocked out AP. And then like I'm like. I, I, I hesitate a little bit and I like run to the corner and I'm like, damn, I'm like actually good in boxing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, you knocked them out. Who who's the guy you want to fight next? Say it. Say who we want you to say. Y'all, y'all know it's Vontez. Oh, oh no. Vontez. I was thinking Jake so, Paul, honestly, but Vontez. But you know, hold on, hold on, hold on. So Jake Paul and Logan, they're coming. But the Vontez one, right? Y'all, y'all ain't hear about no. that? So all right, so it was like a time I was like on another uh, like interview or whatever, and they was asking like, who, should I, who, who from the NFL did you want to fight? I said Vontez. I was like, I was like perfect, just because of the fact that he did so many dirty things as if he wanted to fight when we we're playing football. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, now we got the opportunity to win playing football. Let's fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's fight. Soon as we bring a fight, he said, nah, man, I don't want to fight, bro. Let's golf. Let's have a golf tournament. I'm not bro. <laughs> this dude, bro. <laughs> Now you want to golf. Now you want to golf all of a sudden. It's all right. It's okay. But yeah, let's bring back Jake and Logan because Jake was one of the guys. I respect Jake. Jake, for what he's done in, I guess, the boxing scene, mm-hmm. he's done like like unbelievable like things in the boxing mm-hmm. scene. Like from him just being like a YouTube guy, people not really taking him serious to now it's like everybody want to fight him. Because now it's like, damn, you fight Jake Paul – you will get bad. You up, yeah. right? Jake Paul, he done earned my respect in this boxing scene just because of the fact that, like, he done went about it the right way. He done went. He done tested himself. He done fought YouTubers at first. And then it's like, okay, I'm going to fight athletes. And then, like, oh, I'm going to fight UFC guys. And then I'm going to fight a boxer. I lose to the boxer. I lost to the boxer. But I'm at least challenging myself. I'm challenging, right? Versus Logan, everybody hypes it. I think he gets a lot of hype just because he's Jake's brother. So, and because he fought Floyd, yeah. and that makes me mad. I'm even mad that Floyd even fought him because it's like now he literally Logan literally sits there and be happy to tell everybody, like, yeah, I went eight rounds with Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> like, bro, nobody care. Like Floyd was Floyd, <laughs> Floyd 150 pounds. Like he's like five, four, five, five, 150 Floyd pounds. Floyd kept bro. you up, right? Logan Floyd kept well, yeah, him that up, too. Right? Floyd huh? kept him up too. I mean, I I thought he did. That's what I'm saying. And at the end of the day, he's way smarter than you, and he's beating you yeah. up. He's beating you up. He's, like, literally putting on the show for yeah. the people. <laughs> like, that's literally what Floyd's doing. He's only out there just putting on the show. When Floyd's doing exhibitions, he's not fighting none of these dudes, seriously. Watch Floyd fight in an exhibition versus when he's fighting for a pro ball. You can, like, literally see the difference. He like, literally out there. He's just having fun when he's doing an exhibition. He's out there having fun. So, for, for Logan to be out there... <laughs> Hype about him going eight rounds with Floyd Mayweather, and then people actually give him credit for going uh, rounds with eight rounds with Floyd Mayweather. It's kind of crazy to me. So like that's where a guy want to fight just because, just to show, <laughs> literally to show, not only him but like everybody in the world that like he's terrible. <laughs> he's terrible in boxing. Versus Jake, I don't think Jake's terrible in boxing. I think Jake actually uh, earned some respect. He didn't actually been in the craft. You can see him like growing as a boxer. But don't get me wrong, he can get the hands too. All right, I want to end with this. Um, you know, I appreciate your time. And we got to go into the vault and talk about your Steeler days. Um, the vault. Give us your best Steeler game because, man, we were talking about it. it there, yeah. There's some games that, like, I'm like. There's a few. All right, talk to me. What games you think? What games would you what, I what had you think? I, I had the on. Buffalo game as one uh-huh. of my favorites. And I wasn't even playing. I was just watching that game. It was crazy. <laughs> and then – the San Diego game, Monday the walk-off, night. Walk-off touchdown. The walk-off yeah. touchdown was special. San Diego one. Damn. So. Or the Baltimore game where you just went off. Those are like, I think those, the more, more recent ones that everybody remember, I'll take it back to 2014. Week, I think 15. Mm-hmm. We played the Bengals. Mm-hmm. We played the Bengals and we ran the same I know it's called Georgia. <laughs> yep. I we asked him about that, Le'Veon. Y'all hey. ran that play every single time, and they couldn't stop it. It and that was B, David the Castro was Yo, unbelievable, going crazy, bro. They were the Bengals were literally like they're running right here, they're running right here. We like, yep, yep, <laughs> yep, we're running right there. Yep, stop it, bro. That might be my favorite game. That that game 
it was probably my favorite just because it's like <laughs> oh man i see you 26 rushes we were, 185 and two touchdowns i'm guessing yeah whew. at cincinnati yeah how about, how, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. What was, what was twenty-six that? touches, a uh, twenty-six rushes, one hundred and eighty-five yards, and two touchdowns. With another, uh, what six catches for fifty yards and a touchdown. So three total touchdowns yeah, yeah, over, that. you know, two hundred yards. You were going crazy that game right there. there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that <laughs> game. I went crazy, but I just remember the reason why I love that game so much because I remember those guys. You know, like, yeah, they're running right here. They're running right here. They're coming. They spied everybody over. We come in. We run. We run the ball. We get like eight yards. We come back to the huddle. They like we we took we in the huddle. We like hey y'all. They know they know our play, but they can't stop it. We're like in the huddle just talking. Shit. Like they, I was like, bro, they, they <laughs> we in the huddle like, bro. These dudes literally they know we're running count. They know they know we're running counter because we kept switching up between counter and Georgia, counter Georgia, counter Georgia. So he's like. They know we're running counter or Georgia. They just can't stop it. It was like okay, well let's just keep running it. Let's just keep running. We literally kept saying like let's just keep running. So. Another player called come in. Ben be like, nah, we're going to run Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, Ben is just like, ah, no, no, let's, let's run Jordan. Let's run Jordan. Let's see if they stop it. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally like that. Like, I'm like, bro, that let me know. That's how you know Ben is smart because he's like, he was the one who kept that, kept that going. And then we just all kind of like, yeah, let's do, it. let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Let's just ignore the call. Like, and then we go over to the sideline. Haley ain't saying nothing. Like, damn, y'all going to just keep running Jordan? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> We eat on that. <laughs> we eat on that. Right. But that game, that game was so fun. Um, I think the Kansas City game, the AFC, uh, divisional. AFC um, yeah. divisional game, that game was super yeah. fun. Um, Man, you got a, you got one against the Titans where you went for 204, too. The yeah. Titans okay, game. Okay, okay. just with the Titans, Titans game, though. It's bad, though, because that was the last time we saw LeGarrette Blunt. Oh, is that the game? Because you, right, you went right. crazy in the game. That's not the game. Go be everybody forget. Yeah, you yeah, went yeah. crazy in the game, and everyone was like, "You can't Let's take El Bell out in this moment." But it was like, "That's what you're gonna play later." But we never that, saw LG again. Nah. Yeah, that's what it was. Yep, that's literally what I remember. That's why that game, that game kind of getting because the, the bigger story at the time was Legarrette walking off the field. Yeah. And shit. Like, but yeah, that game was crazy, bro. Because like we had just got Legarrette low key. But actually, like a week before that, like two weeks before that, me and the like Garrett both had ran for like 150 yards versus Carolina Panthers. Like we both had mm-hmm. like ran for like a bunch of yards, right? Then now we're playing the Titans. Like Garrett, we go split and split time. We both going crazy. And then we come in for the the Titans game. The Titans game, I don't know what it was, but like, bro, we were like zoned in. Like we were like so in sync, like from the first snap. Like so, every time I got the ball, I felt like it was just a big ass <laughs> hole, and I was in like eight yards, right? But you know what I'm saying? Like so then. We like just running, running the ball, running, running, running. We look up. I got like 200 yards, and it's like near and down. Like we still got fourth quarter, but it ain't like Legare hasn't been in the game. It's just like the times where he in the game, it just wasn't the, the same as when I was in the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it might have just like maybe the play call or maybe you know what I'm saying whatever it was, but like it just seemed like everything for me that day was just going fucking yeah. perfect, right? And then I don't know. I'm thinking. The way he probably felt was like they ain't they ain't they ain't using me, bro. But I was like, he like got to the point where he felt like disappointed. He was like upset, bro. And then and I remember on the time, like I kinda like seen it coming, so I was like trying to get him in the game, like trying to like get him to use, but they were, like he had come in, they had to tell, hey, oh bro, go back in. And I'm like, all right, I'm going back in. Cause I'm about to at the end of the day, <laughs> I'm trying to win, bro. I'm trying to go out there, you know what I'm saying? Get, Get us going, you know what I'm saying? So like, if they send me back in, I'm gonna just go back in, you know what I'm saying? So, but that was like one of them, like one of those stories that kind of like one of those games that kind of got overshelled by a story because the guy walked the field. But that's another one, the Titans game. That's like, bro, in that game, I was just so elusive. Mm. In the, I mean, it was was it snowing? It was it was cold. cold. It was, it like, was remember, really really cold. Yeah, I remember it super yeah, cold. Really cold. Yeah, I remember it super mm-hmm. cold. Oh, that the, the my rookie year, the Green Bay game too, the Green oh. Bay Packers game too. Like, I don't know. It's like it's been so many like, special moments with the Steelers, bro. It's hard to choose one game. Right? Yeah, it is, but this is a special moment itself, bro. And we just want to say thank oh, you sure. so much for coming on today on the Not Just Football Podcast. Thank you to our special guest, Le'Veon Bell, dude. You killed it. Thank you so yeah, much. Thanks, Le'Veon. Appreciate it. Hey, that's love, bro. Hey, hey, Cam, bro. I know you be running a little playlist, bro. Give me on that. Give me on that playlist. That going. I got in you. Like, I got you. Yeah, get on that playlist. You know what I'm saying? Give me right. Hey, I love y'all, bro. I appreciate y'all so much. Thanks for having me, though. Real talk, bro.